So here what I have is coming out of here is both uh, the starboard side motor power and that's the motor driver is PWMing a, a pulse width modulation which what it means is it's basically um, pulsing electricity very very fast to the motors and then depending on the the width or how long those little pulses are um, that's adjusting the speed of the motor. Uh, <clears throat> these Minn Kota motors um, a standard trolling motor um, uh, although I got these really nice um, three bladed uh, weed safe uh, propellers that um, are sized for this type of motor um, and I can't remember off the top of my head the place that, that has those but uh, they're not too hard to find um, so so okay so then these this is the the main power that's coming off these connect back over to one of these pairs here so what you've got on originally the Minn Kota motor uses a it uses this rotary switch so that it gives you I think five speeds and what it does is actually this yellow white and red wire are all connected to different amounts of the motor coil I'm pretty sure about this I'm not 100 percent positive because I never actually looked at it but basically the way it would control speed is at max speed all of these would have full power at uh, you know you know minimum medium speed maybe it would be just the yellow or just the red or maybe just the the white and the yellow is one speed so it sort of has a series of turning on groupings of these three in order to regulate the speed at five speeds and then in reverse uh, it has two different reverses which um, it does the same thing but just reverse uh, reverse polarity. All the ground is through this one black wire. So what I did in this case, since I'm not using that um, driver technique anymore, I'm using the, PD the PWM technique that this motor driver uses, I just tied all these together um, as one and just and then the, the black is going to the ground. So this is feeds in here, it, it goes up underneath the uh, servo and then it comes out this little tube and comes in here and then this can rotate uh, freely. This is a, uh, a high-tech um, HSR 5995TG. It's actually discontinued now, but it's basically their digital robot servo. Super high torque. It's over 400 ounce inches of torque and um, pretty spendy too. There, I think it was about 115 or 120 dollars um, for that part, so um, kind of uh, you know, is a lot, but it was, it's nice. I think if I were to do this again, I might try to do it with just motors. Um, but I'm not that, you know, this was kind of my first big mechanical project. So I, what I was able to use was from Servo City was these nice, um, they have these sprockets. And then uh, I actually, the these... This sprocket is actually designed, originally it had a plastic little servo attachment and that tore out. So you got to go with the um, metal, they have an aluminum um, adapter that you can see that attach, attaches the servo to the sprocket. So you want to go with those because otherwise those tiny servo threads just tear out. This is a quarter inch chain, um, pick that up at McMaster. Same with this uh, larger sprocket, and this is a two to one ratio. So this one of the nice things is this servo gives you full 180 degree control. Originally I had a one to one, and it turned out that A, you really don't need that much, you don't need 180 degrees of turning on these motors, although one could argue you could do some pretty fun stuff um, if you did. Uh, but the other thing is then even at over 400 ounce inches of torque a 2 to 1 ratio still helps um, and it generally just makes it a little bit um, easier to control um, it doesn't stutter as much when it moves because there's a, a good amount of torque also um, remember how I was saying I shut these off actually because they chatter so much so the other thing I did is I used to have a bearing in here uh, and I actually took the bearing out in order to increase the friction so that they'd be a little more stable once I put these um, the servos to sleep. Um, so anyhow, that's the you know pretty straightforward in terms of how all the turning is going. This is uh, I have 
I got this um, bronze sleeve which to go from I think this is inch and an eighth and I think the the inner diameter on this um, sprocket is inch and three eighths so uh, I think that makes sense anyhow this is all from McMaster in order to get this stuff going both this collar the sprocket and then I have a a small sleeve, a small bronze sleeve that just adapts from this wider sprocket to the width of the Minn Kota um, shaft and then a longer sprocket, I'm sorry, not a longer um, sleeve, the bronze sleeve that drops down through two layers of wood and then comes down into this bronze um, uh, piece here, the flange, as I'm remembering my words here, uh, so this flange is is uh, bolted onto the wood. It's a little oversized. This wasn't in the original design. Um, I thought it would be enough just to have the metal sleeve sort of coming out of the wood. Uh, I think though this this helps, and I'm glad I ended up going with this. Uh, and this is nice. It all just it all fit together uh, pretty pretty well. Luckily, it's not. In order to get the Minn Kota shaft to go into this sleeve, you got to use a um, 